Yo, what's up, family? I want to do a little study with you guys about the great white throne judgment. What exactly does it mean? Let's study it together, family. It is in Revelation chapter 20. The great white throne judgment is described in Revelation 20, 11 through 15. And the final judgment prior to, law, to the loss being cast into the lake of fire. We know from Revelation 20, 7 through 15, that this judgment will take place after the millennial and after Satan is thrown into the lake of fire where the beast and the false prophet are, you know, are basically done with and they're going to be thrown into the lake of fire. And you can read this in Revelation 19, um, 19 through 20 and Revelation 20, 7 through 10. The books, family that are opened in Revelation 20 verse 12 contain records of everyone's deeds that ever, ever existed upon this earth, that ever walked this earth, whether they be good, be evil, because not God is all knowing. He knows everything that has ever been said, done, thought, anything. And he will reward or punish each according to that. Take the time to read these scriptures. Psalms 28, 4, Psalms 62, 12, Romans 2, 6. Romans 2.23, Romans, I, I mean, I'm sorry, Revelation 2.23, Revelation 18.6, Revelation 22.12. And family, also at the same time, another book is open called the Book of Life. And that is the book that you want to be written in, family, Revelation 20.12. It is a book that determines whether a person will inherit eternal life with God or receive everlasting punishment in the lake of fire and yes these two places are real they are not a consciousness you will go to either one when you take your last breath although christians are held accountable for their actions they are forgiven in christ family and their names were written in the book of life from the creation of the world and we can see that in revelation 17 8 we also know from scripture that it is at this judgment where the dead will be judged according to what they had done revelation 20 verse 12, and that anyone's name that is not found written in the book of life will be thrown into the lake of fire, Revelation 20, verse 15. The fact that there is going to be basically like a final, you know, a final judgment for all people, both believers and unbelievers family is clearly confirmed in many passages of scripture. Every person will one day stand before Christ and will be judged by his or her deeds. It's very, very simple. So a lot of people being deceived nowadays thinking they're living for God, they're going to face that someday. A lot of us, all of us, <laughs> every single person walking this earth. Why it's very clear that the white throne, the great white throne judgment is the final judgment. Believers, you know, a lot of believers disagree on how it relates to another judgment mentioned in the Bible. And this is where the, ju the judge the great white throne judgment. It's like some Christians believe that this scripture reveals three different judgments to come. So let's talk about that. The first is the judgment of the sheep and the goats or the judgment of nations, Matthew 25, 31 through 36. This takes place after the tribulation period, but prior to the millennial family. Its purpose is to determine who will enter the millennial kingdom. The second is the judgment of believers, works, often referred to as the judgment seat of Christ, 2 Corinthians 5.10. At this judgment, believers will receive degrees of awards for their works or their services to God. The third is the great white throne judgment at the end of the millennial, Revelation 20, 11 through 15. This judgment of unbelievers in which they are judged according to their works and sentenced to everlasting punishment in the lake of fire. Now, other believers or other Christians believe that all three of these judgments speak on the same final judgment, not all three separate judgments. In other words, the great white throne judgment in Revelation 20, 11 through 15 would be the same that believers and unbelievers alike are judged. Those whose names are found in the book of life will be judged for their deeds in order to determine the rewards that they will receive or lose. That's right. Those whose names are not written in the book of life will be a judge according to their deeds to determine the degree of punishment they will receive in the lake of fire family. Those who hold this view believe that Matthew 25 verses 31 through 46 is another description of what takes place at the great white throne judgment. They point to the fact the result of this judgment is the same as what is seen after the great white throne judgment 
in Revelation 20, 11 through 15. The sheep, quote unquote, the believers, enter into eternal life while the goats, the unbelievers, are cast into eternal punishment. Matthew 25, 46. Indeed. Whichever view holds on the great white throne judgment, it is important to never lose sight of the facts concerning the coming judgments. That's the biggest issue to know that this is true and this will come to pass. First, Jesus Christ will be the judge. All unbelievers will be judged by Christ and they will be punished according to their works and what they've done. The Bible is very, very clear that unbelievers are storing up wrath against their selves, family, Romans 2, 5, and that God will repay each person according you know, to basically what they have done. Romans 2, 6, Believers will also be judged by Christ, but since Christ's righteousness has been imputed to us and our names are written in the book of life, we will be rewarded, not punished, according to our deeds. Romans 14, 10 through 12 says that we will all stand before the judgment seat of Christ and that each one of us will be given an account to God. Now, family, it also talks about, and we're going to get further into more studies. I'm working on a study right now. Um, about Revelation and, you know, First Thessalonians chapter 4, where people are talking about the trumpets. Are these the same trumpets? The thing is, is your, your, your name can be blotted out of the book of life. You know, you can fall. There's going to be a great falling away. And you don't want to have your name blotted out of the book of life. You want your name to be there and to stay there. So, you know there is a way to lose it. There's many ways to lose it. And I'm working on some studies on that right now, but family, we are washed by the blood of Jesus Christ. By his salvation, we are saved. But we are to hold fast to our crowns and not let anything in this world or anyone, anything, take our crown, take our rewards. You know, you don't want to lose your crowns and your rewards and the treasures that you're building up in heaven all for what? For something in this world, it's not worth it. And you definitely don't want to lose your, salva your salvation and have your name blotted out of the book of life. When you repent, there's a renewing of the mind. There's a change of the mind. There's a change of heart. You turn from sin. We are all sinners, but you will look at that change and you will know that it was God that you couldn't do it on your own there are many things that God is still etching out of me you know he's got his like I, I don't know it's taking time it's not something that's happened overnight with me family um, a lot of things I'm still working on is my speech you know not not cussing and say profanity you know certain music and certain things I listen to um, how I handle people that may not quite be where God has me right now. There's a lot of things that God is working on with my heart. He never starts stops working on his family. Remain teachable. You know, if you can't be teachable and you can't feel conviction from the Holy Spirit, that is a problem all by itself. But just know that the ta the days that we're living in, you know, there's there's no going. There's no. <laughs> To me, there's no other way to look at it that we're living in the last, you know, the last days. Now, the last days could be another 50 years, it could be 10 years, it could be next week. No one knows the time nor the hour, not even the angels of heaven family remember that. And even with all these rumors of wars, even the Lord Jesus said that the end is not yet. There are many things that have to take place and come to pass family, but many of them are already coming to pass. So pay attention. Be vigilant in these times. Don't let all of the division and the discord that you're seeing, the conquer and the divide, they are using all of this to divide the people of God, to pull you away from Christ, to pull you away from the truth. God shows no, no partiality, just like I talked about in the last little study. There is no favoritism when it comes to God. Either you are a child of God or you are a child of Satan. There is no fence riding, no lukewarm with him. You will be spit out the Lord's mouth. Either you walk fully for Christ or you don't. Does that mean that we don't stumble, we don't fall? Of course we do. But we get back up seven times, we keep going. We turn from that sin. We don't run towards that sin. We run away from that sin. Whatever that sin is that may be bringing you down, family, that can have your name taken out of the book of life. 
what Christ did for us on the cross and what God did for us, we all will bow our knee, whether we believe or not. And we all face judgment. Every last one of us. Be prepared for thy judgment. You know what I mean? Seek out salvation and fear and trembling, family. Don't be full of pride thinking you're going to get into the narrow straight gate. Might, might have a surprise. God works in mysterious ways. It wouldn't be God if he didn't. But either way, family, the days that we're living in, you're going to be tested fully. You've got to stand for him and stand boldly for him and his word. There are a lot of people that are going to cherry pick scripture. They're going to do whatever they can to lead you away from the truth. Don't let that be you, family. Be set apart. Be different. Be that light upon the hill that can't be hidden. Take authority in the word of God. It is your weapon. It is your sword.